In a quiet neighborhood where the houses were friends and the gardens were their playgrounds, lived Emily, an eight-year-old girl with eyes full of wonder and a heart full of imagination. Her father, Mr. Johnson, worked at a downtown office while her mother stayed home, always busy with something or the other. Emily spent most of her time in the garden, lost in her own little world of make-believe. On Emily's eighth birthday, her father gave her a gift that surpassed all her wildest fantasies, a dress as blue as the midsummer sky, with silver threads woven into it like shooting stars. The hem swayed with layers of soft tulle, and its bodice was adorned with tiny, twinkling beads. Happy birthday, my little princess, said Mr. Johnson, kissing her forehead as she twirled around in the new dress, feeling just like a fairy tale character. That afternoon, when the cake had been eaten and the guests had left, Emily could not resist the pull of the garden. With the approval of her mom, she stepped onto the grass, her dress shimmering in the sunlight. The moment she set foot in the garden, something extraordinary happened. The air seemed to come alive, vibrating with a sort of invisible energy. Emily looked down and saw an ant crawling up her shoe. She was about to shake it off when it looked up and, believe it or not, spoke. Good afternoon, your highness. What an honor it is to have you in our realm, said the ant, bowing deeply. Emily blinked, astonished. Did you just talk? Indeed, I did, princess, replied the ant. When you wear that dress, you can communicate with all of us, the ants, the bees, the birds, and even the shy butterflies. Emily's eyes widened, her heart leaping with delight. She spent the rest of the afternoon talking with her new friends. She learned that the bees were the architects, always busy constructing honeycombs. The birds were the musicians, composing symphonies from their perches. The butterflies were the artists, and the ants were diligent workers, tirelessly contributing to their underground empires. Would you like to come inside for dinner, sweetheart? Her mother called from the kitchen window. Not right now, Mom. I'm talking with my new friends, Emily shouted back, not wanting to leave her magical realm. Just then, her father came out, a concerned look on his face. Emily, it's getting late, and I don't want you to ruin your new dress. It's time to change. Reluctantly, Emily said goodbye to her new friends and went inside. She changed into her regular clothes and went back out, but the magic was gone. The ants scurried away, the bees buzzed indifferently, and the birds sang, but their songs seemed ordinary, lacking the depth and beauty she had perceived earlier. Disappointed, Emily went back to her room. As she took off her regular clothes and put on her nightgown, her eyes fell on the magical dress hanging in her closet. An idea popped into her head. She put the dress back on and sat by her window, hoping. To her delight, one by one, her insect friends started appearing on her windowsill. The ants marched in a line, the bees flew in buzzing harmoniously, and a single butterfly fluttered in, resting gently on her shoulder. You have brought the magic here, your highness, said the butterfly, its wings shimmering like a rainbow. From that day on, Emily found a way to balance her two worlds. She would wear her regular clothes to satisfy her parents and preserve her magical dress. But every evening, in the solitude of her room, she would wear her princess attire, open the windows, and let the magic flood in. Her father soon noticed her beaming smile and twinkling eyes, realizing that the dress had given her something far more valuable than the sum of its threads and beads. It had given her a kingdom, a realm where she was a true princess, not of lands or riches, but of friendship and imagination. As for Emily, she had found her subjects, her confidants, her friends. And she knew she was the happiest princess in any realm, all thanks to a magical dress and a garden full of wonders. So every night, in a quiet neighborhood where the houses were friends and the gardens were playgrounds, if you listened carefully, you could hear whispers of magic, songs of friendship, and the soft, melodious laughter of a young princess, holding court in her room, with her windowsill as her throne and the moon as her loyal sentinel. And everyone agreed, whether they knew it or not, that this was the most wonderful kingdom to ever exist, one where everyone was welcome, 
and every creature had a voice. And so, Emily remained forever the princess of the garden, and her reign was one of eternal summer days and enchanting nights, all sewn together by the threads of a magical dress.